They caught the suspect that crashed and killed a man while he was walking on Calabria. Uh, the victim's family is coping with the loss of their loved one. An arrest made in the case of a human smuggling story in Canipa. Who will face justice for migrants that were found dead and injured inside a train car? And cool and cloudy today, but things change tonight. We get some drizzle tomorrow. Much warmer temperatures are on the way. We'll look at that seven day forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. They were trapped inside a hot train car for more than a day, and some didn't make it out alive. This morning, news of an arrest. The news so Carranza Gonzalez identified as the foot guide for 12 Honduran nationals found in that car. Two of the migrants discovered, as you said, dead, the rest in tough shape. So during his interview with authorities, he admitted to working as a foot guide for three months. He was leading the group of undocumented immigrants from Piedras Negras, Mexico, right to Eagle Pass. And from there, he said they would then board trains to San Antonio. Carranza admitted that the reason he works for human smuggling groups is to help pay for his own contraband. The migrants discovered in Canipa after someone inside the train car called 911. Again, too late for two migrants. San Antonio police believe they now know who was driving a pickup that hit and killed a man on a busy West Side street. They arrested that driver not long after he allegedly left the scene of this overnight crash. As Katrina Weber reports, what police called a hit and run ended with a return to the scene. There was no consoling members of a family. They were heartbroken after learning of the death of a loved one. A man in his 40s who San Antonio police say was run down in the middle of Culeba Road shortly after midnight. Police say he was outside the crosswalk at the time, trying to get from one side to the other near Northwest 36th Street. Officers at the scene said one car had stopped to let him cross, but the driver of a pickup did not and hit him. Initially, they called this a hit and run crash, but from what they say, it seems the driver may have had a change of heart. Police say right after the crash, the driver of the truck, a 50 year old man stopped momentarily, but then took off. And they say a few minutes later, he came back and that is when they arrested him. Still, police say he faces serious charges for failing to stop and render aid. The man who was hit never had a chance to get help. He died at the scene. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Well, testimony continues right now in the capital murder trial of Jimmy Tran. Remember, Tran, one of two men charged with the 2019 murder and robbery of Andre Salinas behind a wing stop. Salinas allegedly selling drugs to Tran and co-defendant Sebastian Espinar when they decided to rob and shoot him. Today, an eyewitness to the murder, a homeless man who was nearby during the shooting, taking the stand. And the defense challenging this witness's credibility Obviously, we're going to be covering this throughout the day. We're going to have much more on the testimony later. It found guilty, though, Tran faces life in prison without parole. Well, a vigil planned to honor the six victims who died in this week's mass shooting in Nashville, Tennessee. ABC's Lindsay Watts on how police say the shooter was being treated for an emotional disorder, but still was able to buy all the guns used in the attack on that school. Let's go! As Metro Nashville police rushed into Covenant Elementary School Monday morning, neighbors nearby helped the frantic students and staff from the Christian school who were fleeing gunfire. We helped a class of kindergartners across a busy highway that were climbing out of the woods. Actress Melissa Joan Hart among those who stepped in to help. The kids are all locked down, but we have two kids that we don't know where they are. Okay. During the deadly attack, police body camera footage shows officers storming in and combing the halls, searching for the suspect. Like Within three minutes of getting there, officers Rex Engelbert and Michael Colazzo zeroed in on the shooter. It made me very proud of my brother. Kevin Engelbert watched the video of his younger brother in action. Our ma taught us to be brave, so, uh, and I definitely was proud to see that in my brother's actions and his fellow policemen and his police department. Police say shooter Audrey Hale identified as transgender and was being treated for an emotional disorder. They say she purchased seven guns legally, including the three used to attack her former school. Police say they still don't have a clear motive. The Nashville community will honor the six victims of the shooting tonight. Nine-year-old students Evelyn Dickhouse, William Kinney, and Hallie Scruggs, as well as substitute teacher Cynthia Peake, custodian Mike Hill, and head of the school Catherine Kuntz. 
There are crosses in front of this school today, one for each of those victims. Community members have left so many messages here, and they continue to arrive to remember the lives lost. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Nashville. Board members, parents, even teachers speaking during this week's NISD board meeting discuss, discussing a lot of issues that a lot of students are facing. Some of the top topics that they're talking about, drugs, guns, and threats. The school talked most about Brennan High School. A student arrested this week for bringing drugs and a gun to campus. Earlier this month, remember, it was placed on lockdown because a former student brought a gun to the school as well. But there's also a lot of concern over Briscoe Middle School. Remember, we reported earlier thir two 13-year-olds arrested for terroristic threats made on a teacher. Parents say they'd like to see BCSO take its school safety task force inside the buildings. New at noon, TxDOT in San Antonio this morning with what they're calling walking billboards. They help to promote pedestrian and bicyclist safety throughout our city. These billboards are used to remind drivers to watch out for people walking and biking on busy streets. Textout says pedestrian and bicycling deaths account for almost 20% of all traffic deaths in our state. It's important to remember these things when walking or riding a bike on a busy road. Only cross at intersections and crosswalks, that's some of their advice, and obey traffic signals and signs. Well, for the first time, a treatment that reverses the effect of opioids and saves lives will be available over the counter. The product is a nasal spray. It's a generic version of Narcan. The FDA, Food and Drug Administration, approved the over-the-counter treatment as a package of two doses. It's in case the person overdoses does not respond to the first dose. The nasal spray can give be given to anyone, even children and babies. The FDA commissioner says the approval is meant to increase access to the medicine. Kickback payments for patients getting two Houston nurses sent to prison. According to U.S. attorneys, Joseph Noenko and Stacy Ajaja owned a health care service business that received patient referrals by paying marketers and other patients. They also admitted to bribing doctors to allow medically unnecessary services for patients who didn't need them. They both pleaded guilty last year for conspiracy to defraud the U.S. and paying and receiving illegal health care kickbacks. The new chair of Jefferson Bank says it's growing, it's thriving, how that growth is leading to an investment on the Broadway corridor. And important issues within the NFL being discussed during this week's NFL owners meeting. The issues everyone is talking about later in the show. Towns in Ukraine continuing to try to live normally despite Russia's latest strikes. How people are dealing with this aftermath. A hospital, a kindergarten, and an orphanage, just the latest targets of Russia's attacks on Ukraine. From the footage we see, there isn't much left of those destroyed buildings. Walls fell, severely injuring people who were already in the hospital, who already had health problems. In southern Ukraine, Russian strikes destroyed a kindergarten that luckily was empty since the start of the war. However, people who live nearby say that they're having to consistently make repairs to keep their town from collapse. And in nearby Konstantinivka, people are refusing to leave their homes. God protects me, she says. God will save me. If not, it is what it is. And people are trying to just keep going. A local butcher shop, as well as others, continuing to buy, provide resources to the community. Their supplies may be dwindling, but hope remains as people find solace among the ruins. All right, well, back here at home, taking a live look out there. Some clouds in the sky. The temps are a little down out there, Justin. 63 degrees, can we pump that up a little bit? It's below average, below average, but it, it, we will. Starting tonight, temperatures start to go above average. We're going to see some really warm temperatures going forward. We saw a little bit of rain yesterday, too. Uh, helped to bump up the aquifer just a bit, up three tenths per foot, 635.5. In your pollen count, not good news. Oak. In the very high category, 11,720 molds, grass, hackberry, all low, but oak, it's a big problem right now, nearing the peak of the season. Uh, we'll talk about our rain chances and warmer temperatures coming up.
Hundreds of millions of dollars being invested in and around San Antonio. Right now, one of the big projects coming to fruition is the new Jefferson Bank headquarters that's right on Broadway. So I spoke with the new chairman of the bank about the reason for the building, the expansion of the business, and the strength of our local community banks. Community banks like Jefferson Bank are really the backbone of America. After 13 years as president, Paul McSween is the new chairman of Jefferson Bank. As chairman, you're not going to see many changes. But the one big change you will see, the new headquarters. It's been something that's been in the work for, I'd say, five to six years in the planning stages, and we're now in the final months of completion. So take a look. More than $100 million invested into this building, set to open in just the next couple of weeks. And I'm told this is going to be much more than just your average bank. We have some uh, restaurants, really great restaurants going in on the ground floor. We've got some third party tenants going in the building. Jefferson Bank has been going 77 years strong and as a community bank, they are thriving. It's a different situation than what we've seen other banks go through around the country. We watched uh, very closely what happened with the banks in California. Very different banking model, different business model, uh, different uh, elements of risk than we bear here in the community banking sector. So with the new chairman, the new building and the new atmosphere, McSween says they are just getting started. Jefferson Bank wouldn't make this investment in, on Broadway if we weren't planning to be here for a long time. We're doing great. We're excited to be in the banking business right now. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. All right, so as you can see out there, wasn't the sunniest of days. They have beautiful, huge windows. Mm. Just not as much sunshine coming in, Justin. And that is the case today, still. Cloudy, cool. If you're a fan of that sort of thing, relish it. Enjoy <laughs> it today because it's going away. We're going to see temperatures really start to warm up. So the forecast for today, 68. That is below average. Mostly cloudy, cool. Doesn't really feel like late March, does it? Uh, but as we get into tomorrow, temperatures make it up to 78. So that's about a 10 degree improvement. But we're also going to add in humidity. It'll be warmer, humid also drizzly to start your Thursday. So those are the changes we have ahead of us. It's a warm front, a warm front that Gulf moisture surges in tonight and that makes a big difference with temperatures as it often does. And from there we just climb 78 degrees Thursday, 88 Friday. That'll be a warm day. Front comes through, but even over the weekend, we're still above average. That front kind of stalls and then look at next week, Monday and Tuesday, low 90s. It does warm up and that is well above average. We see a lot of this in March, a lot of back and forth, which gives us our average. But uh, the next several days is, is going to be warm. As we look at the live cam right now, 62 degrees and cloudy. Dew point is at 40. This number starting to come up just a little bit. Easterly winds at eight miles per hour. And as we look at the visible satellite picture, pretty much engulfed in clouds here. Now there are some breaks as you get up towards Kerrville and Rock Springs. We've even seen a few breaks here around San Antonio, but not many. And that should be the case rest of today. 65 Honda, 63 in Pleasanton, right now 64 in Gonzales and 62 up there in Austin. There are a few very late sprinkly showers there just east of Gonzales and around Bear County, we're in the low 60s. You're still looking at 50s in the Hill Country. Here's our case at 12 hour forecast as you plan out the rest of your day. The kids have practice this afternoon. Uh, we're not expecting any rain, but uh, temperatures will still be on the cool side. 67, 68, as we said, for a high. And then 65 by 10 p.m. and down to 64 at midnight notice. We're starting to add in some rain chances. Not necessarily rain, but more in the form of drizzle. Uh, you know how this goes. Once we get that surge of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, it usually allows for a just sort of drizzly, damp morning. And I think that's what we're going to have coming up on uh, tomorrow. Uh, looking at the, the big picture here, we've got some showers across East Texas. That's that last piece of energy that is moving away that brought us a little bit of rain yesterday. And then as we got to the West Coast, look at this thing. Giant pinwheel. It's like a bowling ball out here. This is producing a ton of rain, a lot of uh, heavy precipitation for California. Some of this energy worked its way towards Texas, but in the meantime, it's going to be another very wet day there along the West Coast. Our dew point trend out ahead of that storm system calls for dew points to really increase. We've got the fairly dry air now. By this afternoon, dew points in the upper 40s, and by tomorrow morning, we've got dew points in the low 60s. So that is that uh, big change that we're going to see overnight, and that leads to the drizzle. So by 4 o'clock today, not much out there. But as we get into, say, the midnight hour, that's when we're starting to see the showers, the very light drizzle starting to pick up. And by tomorrow morning, we're seeing those showers work their way through. It's going to be a wet 
Thursday morning commute. Uh, looks like we've brought rain chances up to 40%. None of it very heavy. It's not going to fill up the rain gauge, but it's just going to be that light nuisance type rain that'll make for slick roads. By midday, a lot of the rain's starting to kind of go away and push east, and then we're just left with mostly cloudy skies by tomorrow afternoon. Rain chance wise, that's probably our best opportunity. Again, it's all light, but we've got some smaller chances Friday, Saturday and Sunday. I mentioned that front kind of stalls out a little bit Saturday, Sunday. That will lead to some chances of isolated showers and storms during the afternoon, uh, but it does uh, stay fairly warm. 82 Saturday, 85 Sunday and then Monday and Tuesday, partly cloudy 90s in the forecast. So as I said, if you like the cooler weather, relish it today because uh, over the next six, seven days, it's uh, it's going away, guys. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. All right, how about them Cowboys? Mike McCarthy, well, he's weighing in on a big trade, brought in a big wide receiver. What other head coaches think of this decision? Plus, mentioning McCarthy, he and Jerry Jones in Arizona. We have the NFL owners annual meeting, what they're discussing, and how it's gonna impact Cowboys. in the midst of the NFL offseason, but it's never too early to talk Cowboys. Jerry Jones, Mike McCarthy in Phoenix, Arizona for the annual NFL owners meeting, of course, taking place this week. So they're designed to allow league ownership to discuss critical issues that need to be addressed at the league level. This also allows us to talk with head coaches like Mike McCarthy. Now that the offensive coordinator, Kellen Moore, is with the Chargers, McCarthy will take over play calling duties for the Cowboys this season. The last time he actually played calls, or called plays? Well, that was all the way back nine years ago, 2014. He was with a much different team. You forget how much time you put into it, uh, and I'm just talking about mentally. Um, I mean, you're in the shire riding to work. You know, it's it's constant. To me, it doesn't start once the preseason game starts. It's the thought process and in the in the mental training starts now. I don't sleep as well as I did prior to the you know. So, uh, but but you know. I'm sure I'm talking in my sleep more than I ever have, but it's that, that's uh, that's how it always was. All right, so he will call a lot of plays for recently acquired. Look at him, wide receiver Brandon Cook. So you see, he's wearing a Houston uniform on the screen right now. That's because he was traded from Houston, from the Texans to Dallas. So at least you stay in Texas, no income tax. And Texans head coach D'Amico Ryan's didn't really want to see Cooks go. At the same time, Jerry Jones saw this as a good opportunity, a great way to justify trading Amari Cooper to the Browns in 22. I think uh, what you uh, want Cooks to do is what uh, Amari uh, did uh, for the overall passing game, not only in uh, the production, uh, which you counted on with Amari, uh, but also the room he opened up for the other receivers. And those two things, uh, because of, of uh, Cook's speed and because of just his his route running ability, he does that for us. With Brandon, hey, it's, it's, it sucks losing a, a talented receiver as Brandon. So we never want to lose you know, talented players. We're really try, we're trying to acquire as many talented players as possible. So it's, it's hard losing them. Uh, and I wish Brandon, wish Brandon the best. You know, at Dallas, know he'll do well. Uh, but, you know, we have to move forward. Uh, unfortunately, that's part of the process, part of you know our business. You you lose you know players at times. All right, so we showed a lot of Texan highlights. We heard from the Texas head coach. Well, they have 12 picks in next month's draft. A high percent of the mock drafts, well, they have them picking a quarterback because they might need one, unless you're a big Mills fan. And this guy right here, he could be the new Texans quarterback, Bryce Young, with the second overall pick. That's if he's not picked number one. And back to Mike McCarthy, said he's losing a lot of sleep. Playing calls is a stressful job. Yeah, a lot Just of pressure. A lot of pressure. So we'll see. Right. We got time. Yeah. Kia hitting a road bump when it comes to its plan to deal with a spike in thefts of these vehicles. Why some drivers, though, can't get the company's new security software update that should fix the issue. And a firefighter who survived that massive fertilizer plant explosion 10 years ago? Well, we're gonna have an update. He's a survivor, and unfortunately today, uh, today uh, God called him, uh, called him home how his passing is bringing attention to just how dangerous Texas highways are. 
And let's not forget, SA Live has some cuties and not just Fiona and, you know, Mike. Yeah. They look at those spot. guys. We're going to take a look at what the game is doing in Market Square. They're going to have some fun. Welcome back. Well, you've got some new details in that deliberately set fire inside a migrant detention center in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico. Dozens of migrants were killed when locked doors trapped them inside with the flames. ABC's Rena Roy reports this is just one of several deadly incidents in recent weeks involving migrants near the southern border. Mourners gathered in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico Tuesday night to remember the lives of the 38 people killed at this migrant detention facility. At least 28 others injured after a fire ripped through the building. Surveillance video shows the moment flames and smoke began to spread, filling holding cells. But the doors appear locked and no one opens them. Some families still searching for their loved ones. Yesterday at 12 is the last time you heard from his brother. Mexican President Lopez Obrador accusing some of the detainees of starting the fire after learning they would be deported, lighting highly flammable mattresses in protest. Officials say those responsible have been brought before the Mexican Attorney General, who has launched an investigation into the tragedy. The center is less than seven miles from El Paso, Texas, and was largely home to men who have requested asylum or were waiting for an opportunity to cross the border into the U.S. U.S. Customs and Border Patrol says it's prepared to receive and process migrants injured in the fire for treatment at medical facilities in the U.S. Ciudad Juarez is one of the busiest border crossings for migrants trying to enter the U.S. 225,000 migrants were apprehended by Border Patrol in the El Paso sector from from October 2022 to February 2023, over 100 members of Congress wrote a letter urging the Biden administration to not restart the family detention centers and instead expand pathways and invest in community-based alternatives to detention. This tragedy comes just three days after two people died when migrants became trapped in a train car near Uvalde, Texas. And just over two weeks ago, eight migrants died after two suspected smuggling boats capsized near San Diego. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Russia's deputy foreign minister says the country has now suspended all nuclear notifications with the U.S. Russian state media reporting that includes notifications of test missile launches. Yesterday, the U.S. said that Russia was going to stop providing the U.S. with data on its nuclear forces. And in response, the U.S. said it will no longer do so either. The two countries started sharing this kind of information regularly in the 80s when they passed a treaty. The type of communication was there to ensure that neither country misrepresented what the other was doing. Now it will no longer take place. The Biden administration is planning to move ahead with a massive drilling auction. They're trying to lease or sell off more than 73 million acres of water in the Gulf of Mexico, all to be used for offshore oil and gas drilling. In its environmental impact analysis for the lease sale, the Biden administration estimated that the oil and gas drilling could emit about 21 million metric tons of carbon dioxide. Environmental groups say that the analysis is flawed. They're taking issue with the size and scope of the sale, saying nothing in the Inflation Reduction Act said it had to be so many acres. They also filed a lawsuit trying to stop the Biden administration from doing this. The National Transportation Safety Board launching an investigation now into that explosion at a candy factory. It happened Friday in West Reading, Pennsylvania. It killed seven people. The NTSB called the incident at the R.M. Palmer Company chocolate factory a natural gas explosion and fire. Now, while the agency is known for investigating transportation-related incidents, since the pipeline is considered a form of transportation for natural gas, it will investigate. Three buildings at that site have been condemned as a result of the explosion. A firefighter's death is now highlighting the need for drivers to keep an eye out on the roads for crews and, of course, first responders right here on our Texas highways. Take a look. West volunteer firefighter Edward Heichel passed away while on the line of duty. He was helping victims during a car fire on I-35 just north of Waco. That's not the first time Heichel faced danger to help others. He was actually on the ground when the West Fertilizer Plant explosion happened back in 2013. 
The West mayor getting choked up as he reflected on his friend passing away while again helping others. He urges drivers across the state to stay vigilant, especially while on the highway. You think that going into a burning building is dangerous. Working I-35, it's a whole lot more dangerous. Uh, the people just don't, they don't take their time. They don't respect a fire engine that's, that's straddling the road. Heichel was part of the city's public works and water department and a firefighter for more than 16 years. Kia now rolling out its software update at dealerships in an effort to make their cars harder to steal. However, it doesn't work for everyone who's eligible for it. After getting the fix, Kia drivers would be required to have the key in the ignition in order to turn the car on. It's meant for the millions of cars on the road that do not have an anti-theft device. And as a result, there's been a spike in thefts because criminals specifically target these cars because they have no anti-theft device. However, some Kia owners showing up to the dealerships to get that software update say that workers are telling them the fix won't work for their cars. This is what a driver heard at a Chicago area dealership. If we do the software update to these cars, um, somebody uses their electric start, the alarm will start going off and it won't shut off. A Kia spokesperson confirms there is a compatibility issue with the software update and with cars that have remote start. They admit that if you try that, it causes the activation of a burglar alarm when the remote start is used. They go on to say that car owners with remote start are going to need to delay installing the upgrade while they work on addressing the issue and changing the software. All right, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. Did you make it outside at all yesterday? I did. Okay, what'd I you did. do? I, I was running errands, the same old, same old. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I was doing so this morning as well. And I can report it was raining oh. north of town nice. uh, overnight. And, but there were puddles. Yeah, we actually did get some good rain. I got a little bit in my house yesterday. It was, it was so nice to see it. We need a lot more, obviously, but every little bit helps. If you didn't hear last half hour, Oak is through the roof today. It's 11,720. It puts it in the very high category, a very high number. And I want to show you the graph here that kind of gives you an idea of where we are as far as Oak season is concerned. Uh, we had a little peak earlier in the month and then came down some, and then we have another big, big peak. Now the question is, is this the peak? And when we get on the back side of it, it'll be a little bit early, but uh, hopefully that is the case. Uh, it does look like things are moving along as you look at the oak trees. New leaves are starting to come out, uh, but everything's green and yellow right now. 11,720, again, very heavy today. Heads up uh, in the pollen count. Uh, here's the scene outside right now. We've got cloudy skies, 62. Dew point is at 40. That number is slowly easing up on an easterly wind at about 8 miles per hour, but it's a cool day. Uh, you still may want your jacket even going into this evening. 67 at 3 o'clock. There could be a few peaks of sun, but we're not expecting much. We're up around 68 for a high today, and then we uh, won't fall all that low tonight because moisture begins to pour in, and that's going to result in a drizzly, somewhat damp Thursday morning. Another look at that forecast and a look towards the weekend, too, coming up in just a couple minutes. A young softball player with all the right moves to get on base <laughs> and her moves are going viral. We're going to take a closer look still ahead. And Leonardo da Vinci's paintings may have had a secret ingredient. Not only a famous artist shares a secret, but how eggs help them not only create masterpieces, but actually keep them preserved as well. We're going to explain.